you know, we're all grown men here and we, you know, it's up to us. We're the ones out on the fields. Um, <clears throat> our coaches, you know, can't hold our hands. It's that we're out, we have to go out there and we have to, we have to find ways to win game. We have to communicate with each other, help try and make each other better because we are a team. We want to win. And if we want to, you know, win a division or play in the playoffs, you know, it's up to us to find ways to, you know, get us back on track. It's <clears throat> up to nobody else but us. It is no bueno in Jays land. That was Matt Chapman yesterday after uh, the Jays losing once again to the Rays. Eight and fifteen in May, six and fifteen against the division. Ten and a half games back of the Rays, out of a wild card spot. It's not looking good. They called the players only meeting. We reached that point in the season where a team is doing so poorly where the players have to call a players only meeting. Let's bring in uh, one of our favorite players, the, the dirtiest player in the game. <laughs> It's Andrew Zuber. It's the Zub. Zubes, how you doing, man? I feel good. I feel energized. It's a it's a players only call right here as well. So okay, uh, I'm ready to go. So, what do you think can possibly come out of that meeting? I mean, I I never been in one myself. It can't be a lot of fun. You're sort of looking around. Hey, hey, you all realize we suck right now, right? And they all go, Yeah, I figured that out myself. And then you go, Okay, trying to play better. Like there's nothing. Matt Chapman sort of says, um, you know, we're all adults here. We all know what we have to do you get to a point like, all right, guys, this has to change, but it's not like they were going out of their way to not play that way beforehand. Um, it's an annoying thing to have to go through in the middle of, in the middle of May. That's for damn sure. So what comes out of it? You hope uh, less games against the American league East right now. Jeez. Mm -hmm. It's a valid point. I mean, players on your meetings, I know with, with hockey or, or soccer, uh, rugby team sports, it can make a big difference, right? You can get together if the efforts are in question, you can get together and, and hold each other accountable. But baseball's different to, to most sports in that regard. It comes down to process, execution. So, yeah, I'm not sure what comes come out of it. Um, what is the main issue right now? Is it simply execution? I mean, we keep hearing the word confidence being thrown around as well. But for you, what is the, the, main, the main problem right now for the Jays? Execution absolutely is the word. We've made a lot, my appearances here, we talked about the way that they changed this team, right? The, the, the way that this team is going to win this year is little things. It was going to be base running. It was going to be defense. It was going to be pitching. It was going to be, they're not going to outslug a lot of teams, but they're going to play well and they're going to steal outs and steal runs here and there. And that just hasn't been happening. You've seen errors in the outfield. You've seen them kicking the ball around on the infield. They gave up seven stolen bases to the Rays yesterday. Mm -hmm. It, 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 you pick a thing, they're sort of failing to do it, and they no longer have that one through nine offense that you say, okay, they're going to outslug a lot of these problems. It's just not the way the team is built anymore. There's no Teoscar Hernandez. There's no Lourdes Gurriel. There's no four, five, six guys that you're saying are getting us out of any hole or we're in any game. Part of what's been so frustrating in this last little bit for Jays fans, the one and nine in the last ten, is they've been in all of these games. They've and not only have they been in them, they've had runners in scoring position. They've had bases loaded, nobody out. They've had first and third, nobody out, and they're scoring one run in those situations. They've had the opportunity to win most of these games, and they've sort of thrown them away. And that's what makes it so frustrating. If they were just losing, if they were the Detroit Tigers and they were just getting outclassed every day, you'd be like, well, the talent doesn't stack up. But there's nobody that they've played in the last little bit. That you're like, oh man, the Yankees are so much better than them. No, the Yankees executed better than them so execution is absolutely the order of their day and they sort of they've they've tied themselves to this one style of baseball and now they're in a spot where when that style of baseball isn't working they're sort of at a loss for other ways to get the job done i truly believe that they're going to turn this around they'll figure it out because i think this jay's team is really good um i'm not so convinced about alec manoa he gets rocked once again chased after three innings three hits five runs four earned five walks six k on 87 pitches um I know this is being brought up a lot, but I think it's worth the question. Is it time for Manoa to, to skip a start? Skip a start in place of who, though, is the is the issue. And this this sort of goes back to the question Charms just asked me. Is a, one big problem you can see right now. It's not necessarily the issue, but there's no depth. There isn't who is the sixth right. starter? Thomas Hatch is coming up to start. There's there's nobody that you're pointing to. Tiedemann is hurt. Uh, there's really nobody down there that you're looking and you're saying, okay, well, we'll skip him and we'll bring up Mitch White isn't ready. Yunjin Ryu isn't ready. There is no, there's nobody there that you're pointing to that, that is going to step in. This is the same thing with the infield and with the outfield. 
Jano goes down, no idea who the backup catcher is going to be. Uh, somebody is Santiago Espinal, who's not even playing well, goes down, and suddenly Ernie Clement is in your lineup. Nathan Lucas is hitting sixth. That's a problem. That's trouble. And that's the situation they have put themselves in with this team, especially in the outfield. You have George Springer, you have Kevin Kiermaier, guys that have to have scheduled days off and nobody to fill them. When it comes to Manoa, man, I sort of have the opinion that every problem a baseball team has filters into one of three buckets. It's either solving itself out, a worrying trend, or a real problem. I'm officially at real problem with Alec Manoa, leading the league right now in walks per nine in the bad way. I don't know if it's if it's pitch tipping or if the way he throws it is obvious. Nobody is fooled by that slider anymore. I don't know if the Yankees exposed it and now every team is on it, but when you play the Yankees and when you play the Rays especially, the Rays find your weakness and they exploit it in front of you. And they did that with him in the last game. Seven steals. They knew when he was going to throw to the plate. They knew, thanks to Alejandro Kirk's framing, which pitch it was going to be. They were teeing off. Mm -hmm. um, you can't have little flaws against the great teams because they do their homework, they figure you out, and they exploit you. Zoobs, the Blue just made a lot of moves this offseason in their lineup. We're moving to Oscar Hernandez, Lourdes Gurriel Jr. They bring in Brandon Bell, Kevin Kimmer, as we all mentioned. But do you think there's some buyer's remorse or a bit of doubt from the front office in making those changes just on how thin this lineup is when injuries do hit? I would say for sure there probably is. I know they're obviously very high on Darlton Varsho. You don't give up Gabriel Moreno and Lourdes Gurriel Jr. unless you're really high on a guy. But it's got to be hard to look at what's happened to Alejandro Kirk. The power is gone. The line drives are gone. The framing has regressed. And you look over and Moreno is hitting 300 cool and easy. One of the best defensive catchers in baseball. A top prospect. They're going to have him for six years. That one I can see coming back to go, man. I don't think anybody is going to be surprised if Alejandro Kirk regresses from last year, but you were hoping that this year it would be it would be enough to get you through. And, and I don't know that it is. I think he'll improve. I don't think he's going to be an all-star again. I don't think he's going to be a huge power guy again. And yeah, he's drawing his walks, but he's the slowest runner in the league. He's a, he's literally first percentile sprint speed. You could pick anybody in the league to walk. You would pick Alejandro Kirk. That's the guy that you would want on first base for free. So yeah, I would I would say they probably are. And I would say in hindsight, they probably got a little bit too cute this this offseason. They they sort of I, I mentioned that they don't have a fourth outfielder. I feel like they probably looked at the outfield free agency and thought one of these guys will come to us. The market will come to us. Somebody will come to us and nobody did and no trade materialized. And they paid through the nose for, the, for Dalton Varsho, who they like, who is a good defensive player, does some small things right. But he can't be hitting fifth. He can't be hitting fourth. He can't be, he's got to be a bottom of the lineup guy. He can't be hitting second and fourth. They just don't have the lineup depth to do that. So he has uh, some serious holes in his swing that, that good teams in the American League East are exploiting. I think he's a good player. I think he's helpful. I do not think it helps to look at Gabriel Moreno and Lourdes Gurriel Jr., who's already hit more home runs this year than he did last year, and go, geez, it'd be awfully nice to have that in the lineup right now. Um, dude, I want to touch on just John Snyder. I mean, uh, it feels like he's trying to figure out what to do, but he doesn't have the answer. And I think we forget sometimes that this is a rookie manager, right? This is sure. the, He's learning on the job with a team that's win now. But with that said, um, I think he probably deserves a longer leash because of that. But because the Jays are win now, you have to think if this keeps going on, this organization needs to have a serious conversation about John Schneider's future. Yeah, I mean, the 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 double mound visit thing is not good. It didn't totally burn them, but that is not a good sign. And I look at I look at listen. The the, the impact of a manager is is nebulous. It's very hard to quantify, but. You know, you can look at the, the the pinch hitting situations, the bullpen management, and then some of the nebulous stuff. And what I saw in the last week was troubling and, and and surprising to me. My opinion on, you know, Schneider's security has changed pretty drastically in the last couple of days. I think back to that Yankee series when it seemed like the Yankees coaching staff was like, hey, we can get under these guys' skin. We can get Pete Walker jawing at us. We can get John Schneider yelling at our third base coach instead of focusing on what his team is doing wrong, which is a lot of stuff right now. He's screwing up how many mound visits he has. He's pinch hitting Dalton Varsho for Ernie Clement in big spots. He's going to uh, Romano, a, a batter early when Swanson has a lefty matchup. There's mistakes. And I mean, they were what, 46 and 40 when Charlie Montoyo got fired. Uh, I think Joe Girardi with Philly last year was about this same time of year. You look at uh, Joe Madden in, in uh, Anaheim last year as well, or the year before that, I think. 
was around this same time. 50 to 90 games is when these teams really become who they are. And, um, you know, going back to the opening clip you played, Matt Chapman in that same conversation said, I don't know how you guys even knew that we had a closed door meeting. And it's because John Schneider told the media. Yeah. I don't know, man. You're trying to win a World Series or not? Like, I, 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 I am generally feel like I'm a pretty reasonable guy, but the rubber's meeting the road here. And and the last couple of years, they've done a great job in September and October of making up the ground. And and I, and, I, and I, you know, you see a lot of people also going, "Listen, it's very early." And I believe in my heart, you can have both thoughts in your head at the same time. You can be reasonable and say, "Listen, it's early. Plenty of baseball left. 110 games left." plenty of time to turn it around. But I also don't think you're wrong if you're a Blue Jays fan to look at the Rays this year and look at the Yankees last year and say, when is it our turn? When are they going to play well for a whole year? How many times do we have to do this? Every year, do we have to do the, the ship is sinking, the ship is going up? Can we just have a year? It seems like it never happens for this team. And I don't think if you're a Jays fan and you're frustrated and you want that, I don't think you're wrong for wanting that. And I don't think you deserve to be like, oh, you don't know baseball, it's a long season. I think you're right to be looking around going, are we sure about this team? Are we sure about this front office? Are we sure about this manager? I don't think you're wrong if you have those thoughts right now. No, and the expectation coming into the season is that this is a World Series contending team and they're the complete opposite. And listen, I'm not calling for John Snyder to get fired, but when the sick, when the sink is shipping, you're looking at the captain of the ship and you're pointing at him. We need to figure this out. And I think he really needs to. On to Pete Walker. Um, unfortunately, when these things happen with a team throughout a season, especially a win now team, someone's going to get the ax for even if that person doesn't deserve it. If you look at Pete Walker, he now has Manoa, Berrios, and Kikuchi. I'm not saying it's all his problem, but does some blame need to be pointed towards him? It's tough. It's tough to ever figure out, right? The the the, the pitching coach thing, and, and as your point there, you can do the uh, oh man, Manoa's falling apart. You could also do the oh man, he really turned Robbie Ray around the other year. You can you can always find examples one way or the other, depending on how you want to spin this. Mm. Um, it's hard to say. It, you, you're looking at. I think you are looking at a point though. To your to your point here, you're look you're entering a part of this season, fifty to ninety, June July. You approach the deadline. You approach you know time to really figure out what is what. Something has to give. People are calling for a shakeup. It's like, what is there to shake up? They only have nine viable hitters. They only have five starters. They only have eight, nine bullpen guys. There's not this next level knocking the door coming to get up. And you can put that on the feet of whoever you want to put that on. It, it hasn't exactly been, you know, the Astros rebuild where it's, where it's layer after layer after layer. We're still waiting for that layer behind the Vladdy and Bo generation. Manoa was part of that, but all of a sudden he's not. So... Yeah, it's hard to say exactly what kind of job Pete Walker has done. You could also say, man, Chris Bassett has looked awesome. Kevin Gosman has looked awesome. They turned Jordan Romano from a Rule 5 guy to a pretty darn good closer. Tim Mesa's ERA has been under mm -hmm. two, basically two years in a row. It depends. Uh, I, I have less of an issue with Pete Walker as I do with how poorly they've played offensively with runners in scoring position lately. Yeah, it's not good. Uh, Zoobs, unfortunately, we're, we're uh, running out of time. But thank you so much, as always. Hopefully, the next time you come on here, we're talking about, wow, the Jays are going to turn around and win the division. <laughs> it's the funniest <laughs> thing, isn't it? Because they're playing they're playing the Twins, who have the yes. exact same record and a commanding lead in the American League Central. <laughs> yeah, and they open up that three-game set tonight. Kevin Gosman on the mound. Zoobs, thanks once again, man. My pleasure. Have a great show, guys.